Jeremiah with Handloader TV and welcome back to the channel. Today we're taking a look at the Nosler M48 Mountain Carbon Rifle, chambered in 28 Nosler. So let's dive right into the rifle. First up, it's got this nice carbon fiber stock on here to help save weight. We have Nosler Signature M48 Action, a push feed design, two position safety. And then we have a Proof Research carbon fiber wrapped barrel. Early on there was some concerns with the carbon fiber wrapped barrels and accuracy and, and how well they hold up under field conditions. However, more recently, I think they've really proven themselves to be outstanding barrels and a great weight saver and still offer exceptional accuracy. We had Dave Fink over at Fink's Custom Gunsmithing install a custom muzzle brake here to help mitigate the recoil of this cartridge. And he did a great job matching the color with the Cerakote there. We decided to top this rifle off with a VX5 HD scope from Loophold. It's a 3 to 15 power scope and offers parallax adjustment. We're using Tally lightweight rings to help save a little bit of weight there. And they're good quality and we trust them. We tested the trigger, which broke cleanly and very crisply at 3.1 pounds on a Wheeler Engineering trigger pull gauge. So that is perfect. That's right where I like my triggers to be at. And all in all, this rifle without optics weighs only six pounds. With the addition of this loophole, it weighs seven pounds, five ounces. All in all, a very light rifle, and it'd be a great option for a sheep hunter or a backpack hunter or somebody who doesn't want to lug a heavy rifle around the woods. So we're going to run some hand loads through this rifle. We've selected some great hunting bullets, some exceptional powders, and there's lots of options out there when it comes to brass. You can neck up 26 Nosler to 28 very easily. Nosler makes exceptional cases. Hornady's making 28 Nosler cases. But we decided to go ahead and give Atlas Development Group a try. They make some outstanding high quality cartridge cases and other calibers. So we wanted to try out their 28 Nosler cases, so all our testing will be using this brass. We're using Redding dies throughout, a deluxe three die set. We've had great luck with Redding, and we'll be using them on a Redding T7 turret press. So we're going to load up some ammunition. We'll go hit the range and show you just how well this rifle performs. So now we're going to shoot a Nosler Acubon 160 grain bullet using Ramshot Magnum powder, an 84 grain charge, same Federal 215M primers, and same ADG brass. We're loaded to an overall length of 3.340 inches. So let's go ahead and we'll see how it does.
For this load, we're using H1000 powder, a 77 grain charge, and we're using a Berger Elite Hunter 175 grain bullet. We're loaded to a little bit longer overall length of 3.3950 inches, which will still feed from this magazine. And we're using a Federal 215M primer. So, let's shoot it. Okay, so we're out here on another day where it's a little bit less windy and conditions are better. We're going to go ahead and fire our first load here. This is N570 powder, a 79 grain charge. We're using a 180 grain Burger VLD hunting bullet. We're loaded to an overall loaded length of 3.400 inches. And we're using Federal 215M primers in the same ADG brass. So let's send it down range and see how it does. For this load, we're using N570 powder, an 82 grain charge, and we're using 165 grain Sierra uh, tipped Game King bullets, ADG cases, an overall loaded length of 3.350 inches, and Federal 215M primers. Let's go ahead and see how the Sierras group.
we're back at the bench now after a few days of testing this rifle and putting it through its paces. And before we dive into our targets and our results, I want to go ahead and talk to you a little bit about the rifle. So first up, we had no issues with feeding. Everything fed smoothly and efficiently from the magazine. And this bolt right here is super smooth. And it runs through the raceway really nice and clean and no issues there. Also, it has a 24 inch barrel, one and nine twist, and we shot some heavier bullets, some 180 burgers, and even some 195 burgers that we had a single feed due to magazine restrictions, and we had no stabilization issues with those bullets. The muzzle brake was a great addition to the rifle. It helped us stay on target, and it greatly reduced the recoil. So all in all, I'm really happy with this rifle. I think it performed really well. And I can tell in looking at it and examining the rifle, Nosler put a lot of time and effort into designing and engineering this. From the carbon fiber stock to the carbon fiber barrel, the glass and aluminum pillar bedding, the action, the trigger, it just all works really well together to create this lightweight, high performing rifle. So with that said, let's go ahead and dive right into some of that performance and take a look at our results. Taking a look at our first target here, we used Ramshot Magnum, an 84 grain charge, and a 160 grain Nosler Acubon bullet. We wanted to stick with some hunting bullets because it's the purpose of this rifle, a lightweight hunting rifle. And you can see that grouped into a 0.86 inch group and decent standard deviation there, 31. Not too bad for the first group there. Moving along, we switched it up to H1000, a great powder from Hodgton, a 77 grain charge, and we used a 175 grain Burger Elite Hunter. Now this grouped into a 0 .60 inch group and was our best group of the day. With a standard deviation of 17, that's pretty good. And moving right along here, we changed up powders again to Vitivori N570 a 79 grain charge with a 180 grain Burger VLD hunting bullet. A standard deviation of 10 and an extreme spread of 20. And I'm going to tell you right now, this uh, grouped in a 0.912 inches, a little tough to measure because that last shot was off paper a little bit, but that's what it grouped into. And the final target here, we used the same N570 powder, an 82 grain charge with 165 grain Sierra tipped Game King. Now this N570 powder is one of my favorite powders for 28 Nosler. We got really good performance out of it and it's going to be a go-to for me. This grouped into a 0.67 inch group. So all these sub MOA and just a real testament to the performance of the rifle. Also, on a side note, I want to note that we used ADG cases throughout this test and they all performed really well and we actually got, I think, up to four or five firings out of the brass and it's still going. So that's pretty good. Brass life's really good with it and the overall consistency of the cases are outstanding. So with that said, we want to thank you very much for watching this video. We do appreciate it, and if you liked it, please hit that like button. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, be sure to post them up down there in the comments section. Subscribe so you don't miss out on any future videos, and until next time, good shooting and happy hand loading.